had us out of pocket clean up the items. Now you see uh, we have crime scene tape here. Now, now anytime we conduct a cleanup, um, we are calling the police before we conduct the cleanup. We're not going to be cleaning up Al Capone, so to speak. Um, um, you know, we're always you know, making sure that we're dialoguing with the responding authorities and stay, staying in really close contact with them because um, you know, we are the last guys that see the evidence and they need to know who we are. Uh, we're also overturning all the property and uh, oftentimes we're finding shell casings. Uh, we, have, we have found the uh, loot bag of the assailants in the past. We found false teeth that uh, they end up tying into the case in some kind of way. Anytime we find anything like that, that's going to be notated in our reports. And uh, we will also be, if it is of significant value, um, we will be calling the authorities out to, to come and, and take care of that shell casing or round you know, as they see fit. But we will not clean up any potential evidence. And, uh, and, and, you know, we're just trying to get out there that we are here to work with the authorities. the first uh, step in the cleanup process. Uh, it's uh, a time where we use a, a special enzyme. It's called a protease enzyme. What it does is breaks up the proteins in the blood, makes it easier to scrub. Um, now, now we use that and, and basically, you know, wipe the surface clean visually. Uh, what comes after that is a, uh, a product uh, called Relyon. It's a hospital grade disinfectant. And that's, this is the product that is actually making uh, the surface safe again. In this property, a decomposition occurred. Um, when a decomposition occurs, uh, to get the odor out of the house, you have to get down to the, what's called the lowest point of saturation. Um, body fluids, when they uh, start to decompose and, and, and you know, separate into their uh, different forms, you, you get fats out of the blood and, and the fats in the blood really seep the fastest and they seep down t down until they can't seep anymore and in this situation it's foundation. Now we got lucky here uh, with this situation occurring on the first floor of the property. Um, many situations are not like that. If it had happened upstairs then we would have to uh, take, take up the carpet remove the subflooring, and depending on how long the person sat there, we may have to come into the neighboring apartment below and, and remediate their ceiling. And uh, we've even worked situations where a person sat there a number of days and, leaked, and seeped through several stories of the property until it reached the basement and, and, and settled on the subfloor. Um, we just rolled up the carpet and, uh, and we have now reached our lowest point of saturation. Now before this gentleman uh, later went to his bedroom and passed away, and that's where the decomposition occurred, um, he was bleeding out for several days, uh, possibly even months before he passed away. And this is why we treat all the, all the property as if it was contaminated. Uh, there's potential blood splatter um, that he was tracking all throughout the property uh, prior to him passing away. Now, tearing up the carpet, you know, in, in a normal situation where you may be remodeling a home, seems to be a, a rather simple and non-technical task. In this case, it is very technical. You have tack strip down here, which uh, is a huge risk. Uh, it could be saturated with blood, uh, poked through the PPE, 
and uh, there, there's a number of uh, things that can go wrong there. Uh, not to mention, you're operating a, a sharp knife uh, while you're ripping this carpet up as well. Now we're at the inspection process. This process can sometimes take hours. Um, a common misconception of our industry is that we come in and spray luminol all throughout the house. Well, turns out luminol is a very difficult thing to clean up as well. So what we're doing instead is we're uh, utilizing a indicator solution that is basically hydrogen peroxide. It's going to foam up uh, whenever there is blood present um, so we can see that. Um, and what they're doing here is they're getting right up close to the wall and, and of course we have two sets of eyes on it because, uh, because one person is very capable of missing something and also after they are through we're also going to have the supervisor come in and, and take a last look at it. What they're doing is, uh, is anytime they find a, a spot of blood they're going to hit it with the enzyme to remove that spot of blood and then they're going to be disinfecting it as well. After we have wiped things down with the enzyme, gone over it with the hospital grade disinfectant, gone over it with, uh, with our high powered lights and gone through the inspection process and even after our supervisor has checked the surface. We then get to the step of using our ULV fogger, our ultra low volume fogger to, to fog disinfectant so we, we make sure 100% that that area is disinfected. After the property has been completely disinfected, that's after we've come in with our enzymes, uh, it will then be time to remediate the smell. Uh, you know, Taking take into account the person was left undiscovered for a number of days and in that situation uh, a, the natural things occur, the body decomposes and body fluids get everywhere and cause a smell. Uh, that is where we have to remediate that smell. Uh, the first machine that you see here is an ozone generator. Uh, it's going to take oxygen in through one side through ULV technology is going to convert that to ozone. What ozone does is it basically suffocates the smell. The smell is a, a living thing. So before this machine runs, we're going to crank up the heat in the house for a number of hours. What that's going to do, it's going to open up the pores in all the surfaces of the home. And it's going to allow the ozone to get in those surfaces and do its work, basically suffocating the smell. After a number of days of the ozone generator running, we're going to then use this machine. It is an, a ULV fogger. It stands for ultra low volume. Um, this is basically a psychological remedy. Um, after the ozone generator has ran, uh, the property basically smells like nothing. Uh, you, and, and in that situation where the property smells like nothing, your mind is going to play tricks on you and you're going to associate that nothingness smell to the last thing you smelled in the property. That's where we're going to add things back into the air for uh, just psychological uh, reasons, just so the family has something clean to smell uh, and, and so their mind is not going to play tricks on them. We're placing caution signs on the doors just to keep anybody from coming in. Ozone is very corrosive and uh, can suffocate you know, anything that uh, it comes in contact with. Uh, we have to get rid of plants, animals, uh, fish even, it can suffocate. Um, if a uh, human uh, comes in contact with ozone for too long, um, you know, they can run out of oxygen very quickly.